Hello, I'm Entridicim and welcome to The Curious Expedition. This is going to be a, a let's look at sort of um, impressions sort of video. I've, uh, I've played about, uh, Steam's telling me four hours, I think that's wrong, I think it's more like uh, probably about six. And you know, I've, I've got pretty far in the game. So I think this is a pretty good place to uh, talk about the game, what I've, I've felt from it. So Curious Expedition Edition is currently in alpha, it's currently on Steam Early Access, and it is a grid, hex grid sort of strategy roguelike game. Um, basically you've got to go around, you've got to explore places, nick stuff off the locals in a sort of um, 19th century sort of antiquarian archaeologist sort of vibe and then get fame and fortune through the stuff you get over the course of six missions. These missions are procedurally generated. So basically the best way would be to show you. So I'll show you the first mission. We'll go new game. Um, I will select Nikolai Tesla. I was going to show you what he had. Can I go back? No. Okay, so these are the people you will be competing against. Johan Huizinga, Mary Kingsley, Frederick Courtney Sellers, and Harriet Tubman. And you have to basically beat these people in the amount of fame you can get. Uh, you're currently uh, trying to get as much fame as possible to be able to get your uh, bust in the place or something. They're making a statue and it's got to be you anyway. Uh, this is basically the, uh, the premise behind it. So normally you get to this screen and you can see wherever people have gone. And you get to pick a location. Unfortunately for the first mission you only have one location so I can't really show you the locations you can pick. But the location you get for the first mission is a well balanced region consisting of mostly wild grasslands. You nearly all, no, you always get this for the first mission just to make it a fairly easy first mission so that you've got a starting off point. Um, but there are like three different ones I think. You know, there are different locations but there are three different difficulties. There's like the easy one, there's a sort of mean one, there's an incredibly hard one. So we'll just accept this one. You start, by the way, with 10 fame and 30 funds. Fame is what you're trying to get. That's effectively your score. Um, you're trying to be as famous as possible. Funds allow you to buy stuff before missions. You don't get to buy anything before the first mission. But they allow you to uh, get money to buy more stuff before the second and third and fourth and fifth and sixth missions. And that allows you to, you know, probably do better and most importantly survive. Um, so expedition one of six. Let's start. We board the ship and we get to accept uh, a mission. Now every time you start you get to do a mission and you don't always succeed in them. Sometimes you fail them, sometimes they're harder, sometimes they're easier. But the very first mission you get is this one which is to deliver a message. So we'll accept it and you've got to deliver that to a village. Uh, set sail. Normally there you get to, by the way, you get to spend some of your funds to buy items. We didn't because it's you know, the very first mission. Um, okay, so we've got to deliver the message. Cool. Right, so this is the map you'll spend most of your time on. It is a hex grid, and you've got the ability to move. You can set waypoints, so you can do like this. I'll delete that. And you've got one and two important resources. You have a sanity bar. Sanity is currently 130, which is, I think, extra. I don't know why we get extra. Um, who's, who gives us extra? Do you give us extra? I think maybe Tesla gives us extra sanity to start with. Someone does. Uh, we also have a standing bar. So standing is, you know, how well the natives respect you. So if you, like, steal loads of stuff from the natives, they're going to be pissed. And they will hate you and possibly attack you. And they certainly won't be like, oh, come shelter in our village for free. Um, sanity is basically how tired you are. You can't... You have issues. Like, if you get to zero sanity and you continue moving, your sanity drains while you move. If you're below zero, there's a chance people will leave, people will get like crazy, and bad stuff happens basically. And normally it involves, you know, people leaving, you get to like, you just yourself left, and then you break and die. So, you kind of want to make sure your sanity stays nice and high, above zero. So, we've got a couple of locations on the map already. You see, we've got hills, we've got uh, grasslands, we've got thick jungles, and we've got shallow river, and then we've got plain old river that we can't pass through. It's impassable, and the same for the mountains. Also, a mountain face sculpture. Hmm. Um, we've got a couple of question marks here as well, and we've got a native village. So different terrain like affects your traverse speed, so you'll traverse it faster or slower. You see this is suggesting we go around rather than actually try and go past the swampy region, because you know that'll take a while to go through. If we go through the swampy region, you'll see it takes us 20, otherwise we go around it takes us just 14. That's probably a good idea. By the way, you can go like one, and then one, and then one, and then one, but that actually uses a lot more. For instance, if we were to go to, say there that's like nine but you can see that if we just go half the distance it's seven because there's a flat bonus of sanity included so instead of just being one tile check what's there one tile check what's there it goes right you should move in chunks 
I kind of like that. It kind of forces you to, instead of just crawling forwards, check, crawl forwards, check, crawl forwards, it actually makes you go, yeah, just play normally, just move all at once. I like that mechanic. That's kind of a cool mechanic. By the way, you also have this compass, which at the moment is useless. Um, it waves around and is completely inaccurate. When you uncover more of the map, it gets more accurate, and it eventually will point to the exit point from the map. And you eventually want to get there, preferably before you die, but after you've got a load of stuff that will get you fame. So let's go explore one of these question marks and see what is there. It is a stone statue. Okay, so we can go and look at loot here. So let's look at the loot. Uh, natives put offerings there for their gods. Okay, so there is a mushroom and there are some mangoes. If we nick these, the natives are going to be less pleased with us. I am going to nick them because I want them. And you can see our standing has gone down to eight. This is going to make getting stuff off the natives a lot more difficult. Let's go have a look down here. Now, beware, by the way, there is a red area there. This red area is, there's a bad guy or something. There's some sort of creature in this area. And it will attack us if we go there. It says, Tiger, 75% aggro chance. If we go here, there's 75% chance it will aggro and start attacking us. Tigers are really dangerous. I'm not going to do this. So let's enter the hut. Um, Shaman, okay. Hi. We can trade with him. We have a trader in our squad, which means we can use the haggle. Now, this is one thing I don't think is done particularly well, is the inventory screen and the bar system is a little bit dodgy. For instance, haggle is an item which has effectively a negative sale value. So when I put it in, we get stuff from it by buying it. That's how haggle in effect works. We can get a treasure map off them, which we can then use to go look and dig for the treasure. That might be interesting. We could also try and get Tome of Fertile Lands. Um... Okay, I could take that home. You can do the same with your mushrooms. I could do the same with drums. I might just get mushrooms because they stack, but it uh, might be a bit difficult. Um, we could probably afford some. We'll just get rid of a few of our spades. Can we get the treasure map as well? Might as well go with the treasure map since we already have spades. Like We know we've got the ability to look for treasure. So we'll do that deal. We'll get um, two more blue mushrooms, which will stack on ours. We'll get a treasure map, and we'll lose two dynamite, which is used for flattening mountains. Three fireworks, and four of spades. Deal. Leave. So let's have a look at our treasure map. We're looking for two hills and a bit of water. Well, the bit that immediately springs to mind is it could be here, but there's a tiger there, so I can't really have a look at that. It's not particularly helpful. Let's go up to the top of this hill. And we'll get a nice sight line. It's there. It, it is there. Yeah. So, we have an issue. We would have to fight that tiger to get past. There's also something over here. Um, what I might do is I might go to the native village see if I can rest there. It's probably not going to happen because I don't have a, a uh, interpreter. But we're going to give it a try. Also, I can upgrade my guys. Ooh. So, you get experience for doing certain things. I'm going to go for an upgrade on my trader because he's like my attacky person. And he's also got one health, so it might be do you know good to upgrade him. There we go. Now he's got two health. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the native village, see if we can rest there. Hope the tiger moves so we can go and uh, dig up our treasure because I really want treasure. Oh my god, that tiger's moving a lot, which is you know what I wanted. Into village. Hi. I'd like to recruit first, see if we can get like a uh, interpreter, animal handler. Sure. Deliver the letter. He included a mark to a holy shrine. Okay, so you can go to the holy shrine and you can nick stuff from there. Eight, standing. Um, they wanted us to leave. No, we don't get the ability to rest here, which is a shame. Oh well, things happen. I can get two cocoa leaves for free. Uh, might be worthwhile. Can I get like a horn? I can get one horn for free. Honestly, since I don't have anywhere to rest, I think I'll go for cocoa leaves because you can have them to, you know, boost your sanity just like you can with uh, whiskey. So I'll take the cocoa leaves and I'll leave. And there we go. There's our shrine. So we can go to the shrine and that's uh, you know, somewhat useful. You can get stuff from there like a an idol and maybe some other stuff if you're lucky. I'm going to probably eat the cocoa leaves. However, we've kind of affected who? The cook? The cook is now getting crazy. Uh-oh. Everything is so colourful. Uh, oops.
Right, run to here, hope that the tiger doesn't come this way. Yeah, stay over there, tiger. Stay over there. No, 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 stop coming this way. Yes! Right. No, go away, tiger. Go away. Yes, good, right. We are in the right place, correct? Successful! <gasps> A golden mask! Take all. Okay, so this is pretty good loot. Um, we need to head up there. Problem is, it's pretty far away. I'm going to have to drink the whiskey to make it there. And it's still just too much. Far too much for our sanity. I think it's still worth trying for it, though. Ooh, what's this? Elephant graveyard? And there's a mysterious egg. Well, I'll definitely have myself a mysterious egg. Right, we have a shrine up here. I don't think we can get to the shrine. We've not got much sanity left at all. I think I'll head for here and just hope this is the way out. Nope, but it is a place we can rest. So we arrive at this and we can rest overnight. Definitely going to rest overnight. So now we've unlocked quite a lot of the map. You can see our compass is pointing pretty consistently. Ooh. Native animal handler, mental condition has won the upper hand. She screamed. Okay, so we could separate our animal handler. Or we could ignore. I'm going to separate. Okay, so I assume that there's a chance that she'll leave us there. It was worthwhile. Let's rest of the night again. We've got uh, a long way to go. My cook is really annoying. I'm going to rest overnight again because we don't know how long it'll be. A young native was struggling to fend off a ferocious animal. I could help or I could ignore. I'm going to ignore because I will die. Though we lose a little bit of sanity for that and uh, we miss the opportunity to get some more standing with the locals. I have no idea what you're saying, mate. Good for you. Right, let's go to here. So the game, basically, you, you play as these, uh... Ooh, we got a butterfly. Um... Eggs start to tip from side to side, cracks appear to begin, something inside wanted to get out. A baby tortoise. Oh. Everyone pack up, we're moving on. Awesome, we got ourselves a baby tortoise. Ooh! There's a thing here on the hills. Well, I will take a little bit of a move. Sure, we'll hit the shrine. It's nearby. Ah, and this is a place you can rest as well. Okay, we've got a pretty good starting location here. Uh, examine the shrine. Enter the shrine. And we can investigate the altar. There we go. We've got a golden statue. Now, by taking this, we'll get less standing again with the locals. And there can be bad side effects, such as volcanoes, giant chasm, weird space below us, just like stars and stuff, and the ground falling away. Bad things can happen, but I'm going to take it because you can sell it. And there we go. Volcanoes have happened. So I'm going to try and make it here. We are pushing our sanity to get here. There we go. Explore the springs. I'm sure we'll do rest overnight. So we're actually quite far at the moment. 92 days. And fire is going to destroy everything. But the compass is being pretty true. Which means that... Uh, I've... Ooh. How far away is that? Yeah, we can make it. This is probably the Golden uh, Pyramid. Now, the Golden Pyramid is the place you need to get to on every map to leave the map. I'm pretty sure we can make it here. We're, you know, probably fine. Unless the tiger is crazy and attacks us, we should be able to get out okay. Ooh, we've also got more experience we can spend. Um, I'm going to upgrade the merchant to get a bit more health again. Just escape the fire. Ooh, add tortoise to trek. <gasps> We've got a giant tortoise! Can carry four additional crates. So we start with a donkey with this character who's got three crates, but instead we've got a giant tortoise that can carry four. That's pretty awesome. Um, I have to, however, get rid of someone because I now have too many members. I think the best uh, sort of party consists of one carrying animal and then four people, including yourself. I think I'll get rid of the donkey. Dismiss. Bye bye, donkey. Ooh, there's something down here. 
Oh, that's the pyramid we're going for. Uh, ooh. It's pushing it. We'll, we'll make it. We'll make it. And then you can explore the golden pyramid, enter the pyramid, finish the expedition. Our animal handler tells us it will not be following me to the civilized world, probably because we were kind of dicks to the locals. And then we get uh, 100 fame for the golden pyramid, 5 for each butterfly, but it took us 104 days, so we only get 16 additional fame. But we can get more from all the stuff we brought back. We did bring back quite a lot. So now you get to pick a perk for completing a mission successfully. We get choose five perks as opposed to three. Additional information about your region. For location and all locations you found. I'm going to go for geography. Additional information about a region. Seems pretty nice. And these are our other four people we're competing against. They haven't done particularly well. And neither have we. So we can either sell for money or for funds. Um, sorry, for money or for fame. So fame is what you're eventually scored on. You kind of want to you know, get as high a score as possible. But funds will allow you to buy extra stuff on the missions which will allow you to survive. This is worth more fame than it is funds, so I will gift, gift, and then this one is actually worth more funds, so I'm going to sell all the mushrooms for funds. So we're actually in third now. Just. Just in third. And we have 90 funds, so we're doing pretty well. So that's expedition one of six, and then you'll end up doing six missions in total. However, I've never managed to complete further than mission five. I've died one or two times I've been to mission five. I honestly think this mission, this game is a little bit hard currently. It's kind of a lot of fun. I've shown you the basic mechanics, and my opinion of it is, it's quite a fun game, and I see a lot of potential in it. And there are a couple of mis problems with stuff like the uh, the the inventory management system isn't great, but it's a little bit too hard in its current iteration because you're both trying to get as much fame as possible to be able to place on the scoreboard at the same time as trying to survive, and I can barely survive to Mission 5. It's a very tough game. Um, you know, I found luckily a place to rest there, otherwise we would have probably died. Um, two places to rest there, in fact. We were very lucky on that one. I thought we could have died in Mission 1, which would be kind of embarrassing. But generally, I think it's a bit too hard at the moment in its current duration. Is it a good game? It's definitely got potential. I definitely like the potential. Ooh, um, we've got to go find Deserter. So this time we've got the random deserter mission where you've got to go to a uh, native village, find the deserter, and then bring them back. And a cultist wants to join the expedition. Now the problem is I can't see their abilities. Ooh, I can. Okay. Um, perfectly normal person with special interest will not try to conspire against you. I've already got a military person. You've only got one health. Nope. No thanks. Now this is a chance we get to purchase equipment. Hello, tortoise. Mr. Palliser. Aww. So, you can see here we've got 90 funds to be able to spend. Um, I'm going to go for some rope. That. We'll get ourselves some machetes. Generally, I don't think that the shovels are worth it because you need to A, have a treasure map. B, have some shovels. C, find the place. D, you know, it's, it's just a complicated set. And we definitely need something for sanity. So, I'm going to get some chocolate for sanity. Uh, I might actually... Get a little bit more chocolate. There we go. Deal. And the maps are procedurally generated, so you do get a different map every time. Hello. Oh, here we go. We've got a nice little place. Three places to look at from the start. Good. I do appreciate this. I think what we'll do is we'll end it here. This is only just a quick glancing at video to show you what this uh, game is all about. Generally, I feel that the game is fun, definitely has potential, but I think it's maybe a bit too infuriating in its difficulty that you can basically never win, or at least if you're me, never win at the moment. Um, I do think it's a bit too hard. Um, the ability to not even complete the game, let alone you know beat the other people on the scoreboard or even get close to them sometimes, is just a bit much. It does feel like there is a bit too much randomness to it, especially when some of the early fights, like that tiger would have massacred us if we fought it. I would like to show you how the combat works. Maybe it's worth having a pop around, see if we find the native village so we can actually have a fight. Yeah, I might do that. This is the mission, right? So the mission is a place where you can spend the night. Uh, however, they will, you know, make you trade for the ability to spend the night. They'll be like, you've got to give me stuff to spend the night here. Uh, if you have the missionary character, you can do it for free. I don't need to spend the night, I've only just started, so no. Where's this? Is this the Shaman's Hut? I don't need to go see the Shaman's Hut, no. Um, we're going to pop down here, do a bit of a climb. So there's a resting place down here. So we can spend the night down here if we want. I might just spend the night down here, but it will take me mm, quite a lot of time to get down there. No, I'm going to pop up here.
It's a stone statue with some loot. Okay, I'll take all the loot. I'm not particularly nice to the natives. I'm a terrible person. Right, so we're going down here, it looks like. Uh, I don't think there's any way up here. I very much doubt there's anything over here, but we'll have a look just in case. Right, so... Ooh. Let's do a little pop down here. Right, if I take one shot... No, I'm, I'm going to eat the mangoes. Got to eat the mangoes. Right. Now my concern is this panther. But it looks like we have to go that way. Oh well, sometimes that's the way we, you know, everything goes. We can explore this nearby waterfall, which gives us a place to rest overnight. Shoot it down, I can't, I don't need bullets. So, unfortunately, that vulture is going to need to continue around. You do get a lot of these events uh, when you rest. Basically, the longer you go on, the more uh, chance of, you know, some bad events can... Ooh, rest again. Uh, can happen. It's basically, uh, ooh, mental condition got better of her. A separator. She slept in the wilderness. She's disappeared without a trace in the morning. Right, so we just lost someone. And I am down to my tortoise and my trader. Oh well. Natives appeared, but I don't know the person who can speak their language, so I have to say them goodbye. God damn it. It's not going so well. Right. Now, what do we do? I think the way forward is over here. It must be. So I'm going to go over here. I could blow up a mountain, but there's a panther down there, and I doubt they'd have put something behind the location you can't get to without a certain item. Ah, you can actually get down there. you just got to wait for the geezer to go. Aha! And there we go. So one of these is going to be a village. Please be a village. Empty camp. No. We can search the empty camp at least. And we've got some rope. Okay, let's go up here. We can rest up here and we can also get some sight lines. Rest of night in the spring. Come on, I was just looking for a fight. Someone dropped something. What, what was dropped? What was dropped? I can't remember what, what we had that we dropped. I don't know, we dropped. Okay, we're going to leave with this. It's probably too little, but oh well. We're down to like two characters now. That's the, actually the end location for the entire trek. Let's try and find a little bit more before we leave. We might end up fighting the tiger, but screw it. Come on. Please be the native village. Okay, the, yep, the tiger's hunting us. Now, this is how combat works. We're entirely dead here. But that was fine. I was pushing it deliberately to show you combat. So this is how combat works. You've got an enemy. You've got yourselves. You get to roll die. So let's roll our die. We have Tesla, Tesla, our trader, and... Uh, oh, that's the Tesla weapon we've got. The lightning gun. Which has two sides of that. And four blanks. This has got two weapons. Two runs blanks. Three, uh, I, three mind. Yeah, let's roll. So... You can see that we've got certain vibrating dies to give a combat. This gives us a shield combat, which gives us one shield. We could go for precise attack. What I'm going to do is I'm going to re-roll these and hope to get the Tesla one. I failed. But instead I got this, which gives us punctuation, which does four damage. Fortunately, the tiger is ridiculously strong and we're going to die. Or it could roll double blank. I'm going to re-roll the Tesla die. Please give me something. Yes. Right. Oh. Is that not useful? Okay. So the Tesla die, unfortunately, doesn't have anything to, com to combo with. Um, we're probably going to lose pretty badly here. Yep. Tesla's down. That means we no longer use Tesla's die. Um, so instead, 
we can just do one damage. So unless he keeps rolling double blanks, we are completely dead. And nope, that's everyone dead. We lose. There we go. And we died in mission two. I was definitely pushing it. I was definitely not playing that to win. I was uh, pushing it way far than I should have done. But uh, that just shows you how quickly you can die. Enemies in this game are a little bit too hard, in my view. Um, it's very, very hard. It's a very hard game. I think too hard. I think too hard to the point that it just gets a little bit too infuriating. Um, I would not currently suggest it on the basis of that, but I would say it's definitely a game that I would like to suggest in future when they finally figured out the balance issues. It, of course, is in early access, so, you know, um, that'll probably be fixed at some point, I imagine. But in my view at the moment, it is just a little bit on the too hard side of it's just a bit too hard to actually be fun. I often feel that the game is just like, ha, 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 you're dead. Uh, especially when you have enemies like that who will just kill you. You have very little chance against them. Um, when they've got, you know, attacks that can attack the entire party and do like three or four damage or whatever. But I definitely think it's a very good game uh, in terms of concept and in terms of possibility for the future. It's definitely a game I'd like to actually continue doing on the channel at some point. Uh, maybe in the future do like a series or something on it, just a short series, uh, when it gets a little bit more refined. So at the moment, I'd say it's pretty good. There are a couple of issues, especially with the inventory management system I don't particularly like. Um, if you go over the amount of stuff you can have. If you, if you let's say, eat some chocolate, you then have to manually move stuff that's overextended into your selection. It doesn't automatically just, you know, go, oh, okay, you've got enough slots, you're fine. Uh, also, if something else takes something out of your inventory and you have a blank slot, it doesn't remove the blank slot. It still thinks you're overbalanced, uh, you're overencumbered. And you have to manually move something into the blank slot and then move it out for the game to recognize that you're not using it anymore. Um, I think a few things like that are just maybe early access things that they need, you know, refining and getting rid of. But ultimately, at the moment, I do feel it's a very playable game. Uh, I don't see any real problems of it, um, and, you know, for an alpha, that's always a good sign. Other than the fact that, you know, there's just a couple of things to do with the inventory management system that might be fixed, and, um, in general, maybe the balance is just a bit off. It's a bit too hard. But, in general, I'm looking forward to it. So, I've been Aaron Lissin. This has been The Curious Expedition. I did not give you a, you know, a long explanation of why archaeologists aren't like uh, Indiana Jones or Lara Croft, because I could have done. I could have done. I have two degrees in that subject, actually in that area, not that specific area. But anyway, um, it's probably something I'll talk about when I actually do a series on this eventually, maybe. Uh, but until then, I've been Aaron If you enjoyed, please leave a like. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. But until then, stay shiny.